Episode 301. Joel plans to go back. When Joel announced that he had to leave for Canada urgently for some work-related issues, Madeline was left completely baffled. In the background, Mrs. Rogers and Grandma had heard their conversation, and they knew who was behind Joel's sudden departure. They were really delighted at this news, but they pretended not to have heard anything. Madeline grasped Joel's hand and took him to their room. As she closed the door, she looked at Joel and seethed in anger. What do you mean, Joel? Why are you going to Canada? What about me? Joel sighed and stated, Maddie, I won't be able to explain anything to you in detail right now. Just know that my company is facing a big problem right now and I need to get there as soon as possible. My absence will only lead to huge losses which I can't afford. Joe, I understand your situation, but then what about me? I can't just stay here alone. Madeline replied. She was trembling with fear. Joel made her sit on the bed and mentioned consolingly, Look, Maddie, you know you are here for Grandma's sake, and she still needs you. It is just a matter of a couple of days. Madeline could not believe what Joel was saying. What do you mean by that, Joe? And hold on, what is so urgent that you are ready to leave me here all alone? Madeline probed. Joel took a deep breath and sat next to her. His face seemed really anxious. Maddie, you know for the past eight years I've been striving to settle my business. It was actually getting stable, but suddenly the value of our shares has started to drop. If this goes on for a while, we will be facing a huge loss, so all the shareholders have arranged for a board meeting after two days. I will have to attend it. I have no other choice. Joel explained anxiously, I don't know what to do, Joe. I won't stay here alone. I will go with you. Madeline replied. The thought of staying in the Rogers mansion without Joel made Madeline anxious. If I finish my work early, I'll come back and take you back, Maddie. And it is just a matter of a few days, right? Joel affirmed. Madeline became much more distressed after hearing this. She wanted to stay as far away as she could from the Rogers mansion. But now, fate was playing a twisted game with her. Joel understood her concerns, but he had no other option. Suddenly, his phone rang, and he went out to receive it. Madeline also came downstairs, lost in her thoughts. Mrs. Rogers looked at her and inquired, Madeline, what happened to you? Why do you look so sad? Madeline awkwardly smiled and answered, No, I am fine, Mrs. Rogers. Actually, Joel wants to go back to Canada. Mrs. Rogers and Grandma acted as if they didn't know about this and pretended to be shocked. Mrs. Rogers made a concerned face and interrogated, Why, I mean, what happened? Why does he want to go to Canada all of a sudden? Mrs. Rogers, Joel is facing some problems in the company. Madeline answered. So now, what are you guys planning to do? Mrs. Rogers was desperately waiting to hear Madeline's response. Joel is facing a tough situation, so how can I sit back and do nothing? I have told him that I am coming along. Madeline answered. Her reply swept Mrs. Rogers and Grandma off the floor. What? exclaimed Mrs. Rogers. She excused herself and rushed to her room to call Sean. When Sean learned about Madeline's decision, he was horrified. His entire plan had backfired. What? Damn, how could she do that? Mom, do something, please. Make an excuse, persuade her, do anything you can, but please don't let her go back with Joel. I have purposely created all of these problems to send Joel back to Canada. If Madeline leaves, all our plans will go in vain. Hearing his concerned voice, Mrs. Rogers consoled him. Sean, don't you worry. I will talk to her and ask her to stay for Grandma's sake. Okay, fine. Mom, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Sean spoke on the other hand and cut the call. Victor and Adam were still present in Sean's cabin when they saw the troubled expression on his face. They questioned. What? What happened, Sean? You look so distressed. Sean looked out of the window and explained. Madeline has decided to leave with Joel. Adam and Victor looked at Sean, completely shocked. How can she leave us like this? Adam gasped. Simmer down, guys. She won't go. Joel will be the one to leave. Sean smirked and looked at them. Adam and Victor knew that Sean had something else planned in his mind. On the other hand, Mrs. Rogers was trying to persuade Madeline to stay. 
I can understand what you are trying to say, but you know about Grandma's health. She needs you the most. When you are near her, she seems to be doing better. I am afraid that your sudden exit from here would adversely affect her health. Can't you wait for some more days? Mrs. Rogers insisted. Madeline was left in a dilemma. She thought for a while and then replied, You know, Joe was telling me the same thing. He said I should stay here for some more days, for Grandma's sake. Yes, please stay with us. When Joel finishes his work, he will come to take you back to Canada. Mrs. Rogers replied. Madeline smiled at her and then returned to her room. Joel was talking to his assistant over the phone. As soon as he saw Madeline, he disconnected the call and told Madeline, Maddie, I need to leave tomorrow morning for Chicago. I have a flight from Chicago to Canada. I just wanted to inform you. Why do you even care to inform me, Joe? Madeline replied annoyingly. Joel knew the reason behind her anger. He took a deep breath and then replied, Maddie, I have always listened to you. I am just telling you to stay here for a few days. Please listen to me for once. Don't be upset. I won't be able to work there if you stay upset with me. Although Joel tried to pacify Madeline, she stayed mom and did not reply to his statements. In the evening, when Sean came back, he saw Madeline helping Hillary complete her homework. It had only been a few days since Madeline had arrived, but Hillary had formed such a strong bond with her. As soon as she saw her father, Hillary put down her pencil on the table and ran towards him. Dada! Sean picked her up in his arms and probed. Hey, princess, did you miss Dada? Yeah, I missed you so much, Hillary replied. Sean chuckled at her cuteness and further asked, How much? Hillary stretched her hand as wide as she could and answered, This much, Dada? Her adorable response moved everybody. Sean sat on the couch and looked at the notebooks lying on the table. Wow, so my princess completed her homework. Sean asked surprisingly. Yes, Dada, almost complete. Madeline helped me out. Hillary replied with enthusiasm. Sean looked at Madeline and thought to himself, Of course, she had to help you. After all, she is your mother. Sarah, I hope at least now you will end this drama and come back to us. Sean was lost in his thoughts when Mrs. Rogers came towards him and mentioned, Sean, come to Grandma's room. She wants to talk to you. Sean nodded his head and proceeded to Grandma's room. Apart from Hillary and Madeline, everyone else was present in the room. Sean, your mother must have informed you that Madeline is willing to go with Joel to Canada. Grandma asked. Yes, and I have asked her to convince Madeline. Mom, isn't she staying with us? Sean asked in all seriousness. Looking at the troubled expression on Sean's face, Mrs. Rogers assured him. Sean, don't panic. I had a conversation with Madeline. She informed me that she is staying here with us. Hearing Mrs. Rogers, Sean was on cloud nine. He gleefully replied, If that is the case, then this calls for a celebration. We will plan a family vacation once Joel leaves for Canada. Now we will get to spend more time with Sarah and force her to reveal the truth. Mrs. Rogers was pleased with Sean's suggestion. Wow, that's an amazing idea. This way, Madeline and Hillary will also get to spend more time with each other. Hillary is still unaware of the fact that Madeline is her mother. Mrs. Rogers stated, just as she was saying this, Hillary was heading to her grandma's room. Really, Dada? Are we going for a vacation? She asked in excitement. Everyone was shocked to note Hillary's presence. They wondered if she had heard anything about Madeline being her mother. But when Hillary continued her inquiry about the vacation, everyone sighed in relief. Princess, now that you have heard everything, don't share it with anybody else. It's top secret, okay? Sean whispered to Hillary. Hillary nodded her head. She was delighted at the prospect of a vacation. During the dinner, Mr. Rogers noted that Hillary seemed exceptionally happy. Angel, you look quite happy today. What's the matter? Mr. Rogers asked. Sorry, Grandpa, I can't tell you. It's a secret between Dada and me, muttered Hillary and smiled. Madeline kept staring at Hillary with a smile on her face and wondered what could be the reason for her happiness. After the dinner, everyone drifted to their respective rooms. 
Madeline was already tense about Joel's departure. She could not sleep the entire night. On the other hand, Sean was really excited. Everything was going as per the plan. Now with Joel out of his sight, he would finally have Madeline all to himself. The next morning, everyone took their seats and started having their breakfast. When Mrs. Rogers noticed Joel, she was a bit puzzled. She asked, Joel, Madeline had informed us that you had a flight this morning to Canada. Yes, Mrs. Rogers, but I don't think I need to go there anymore. Joel replied. Hearing this, Sean almost choked on his food and his fork dropped from his hand. Joel then continued. Actually, I had to go there for my business, but my assistant informed me that he would handle the situation. Everyone was taken aback by Joel's announcement. Until now, they had been eagerly waiting for him to leave the house. But now, all their plans had failed. They were now confused as to what to do next. Episode 302 A Small Vacation When Joel finally declared that he would not be going to Canada, the entire family was shocked. They had no idea what made Joel change his decision. Only Madeline heaved a sigh of relief when she heard that Joel would not be leaving her side. Sean knew it was time for his second plan. He quietly messaged someone on his phone and then continued eating his pancake. Just as Joel had finished his breakfast, he received a call. His facial expression changed within a moment. He stood up completely baffled and answered the call. What? How is this possible? But you said that you could handle this. What? Damn. Okay, got it. No, don't worry. Yes, I will be there. Joel mumbled over the phone. His face seemed really perturbed. When she saw Joel, Madeline got worried and asked in a concerned voice, What happened, Joe? Why do you look so worked up? Joel looked over at her and replied, Maddie, I need to go to Canada. Things have escalated there. They won't be able to handle things without me. I need to be there. His reply hit Madeline like a thunderbolt. Joel immediately rushed to the room and packed his stuff. To understand the situation correctly, Madeline followed him. As soon as he saw them leave, Sean started grinning. This did not go unnoticed by Mrs. Rogers. She went up to Sean and inquired, What have you done this time? How did he suddenly change his decision? Nothing much. I just tried to buy all the shares of his company. Sean replied with a smile. Mrs. Rogers was pleased that Madeline would now stay with them. But she also seemed concerned about Joel. She did not want Joel to suffer any financial loss. As she entered the room, Madeline saw Joel packing his suitcase. Joe, a while ago you said that you don't have to go to Canada. Didn't your assistant tell you that he could manage everything out there? Then why are you leaving now? Madeline interrogated. I don't know, Maddie, but my assistant informed me that someone wanted to purchase the shares of our company. This time I have to go there, irrespective of the circumstances. Joel replied while still packing his bag. It's okay, Joe. Work is more important. I don't want to trouble you in any way. You have already done a lot for me. And yes, as soon as you get there, please call me. Otherwise, I would be worried. Madeline mentioned in a soft voice. After he packed his stuff, Joel cupped Madeline's face and smiled. I think now it's time to leave. Maddie, please take care of yourself. If you face any problem, just give me a call. However busy I might be, I will definitely answer your call. Saying this, he hugged Madeline and then headed downstairs. Everyone was present in the hall. Joel went near Grandma and asked her to take care of herself. Sean was watching him from a distance. Mrs. Rogers signaled Sean to go and talk to Joel. Sean sighed and went towards him. He lowered his gaze and remarked, Joel, to be very honest, you have done a lot for this family. I will never forget this. If you need my help, feel free to ask, okay? Joel nodded his head. Sean had already ordered the driver to drop him off. When Madeline came downstairs, Joel had already left. She sighed in disappointment as she had wanted to drop him off at the airport. Sean went near her and mentioned, Miss Madeline, your fiancé has already left. I know, uttered Madeline dejectedly. When she turned around to leave, Sean clasped her hand and mentioned, Let me know if you need anything. You won't face any problem here. Hearing Sean's words, Madeline's heartbeat escalated. She freed herself from him, went to her room and locked the door. She started staring at her hand. 
which Sean had held a while ago. She was just thinking about his words when someone suddenly knocked. She composed herself and opened the door. Katie was standing, carrying her breakfast in a tray. You didn't have your breakfast, so I brought it here. Katie smiled and placed the tray on the table. Thanks, Katie. Madeline lovingly replied. Oh no, please don't thank me, sir. Katie was about to call her Sarah when she corrected herself. If you need anything else, just let me know about it, okay? Katie mentioned and left the room. On the other hand, at the company, Victor was asking Sean about Joel. He wanted to know how Joel had changed his mind to go back to Canada. Victor kept bombarding Sean with numerous questions. Finally, after teasing him with his silence for quite a while, Sean answered, Actually, I have already thought of an alternative plan. When Joel refused to go back, I messaged my assistant and ordered her to purchase all of his company's shares. And this left him with no other choice. He had to go back. Sean's response caught Victor off guard. He looked at Sean and uttered, You are as smart as a whip. Hats off to your genius, man. When Sean and Victor returned to the Rogers mansion in the evening, they saw everyone sitting in the hall having tea. But Madeline wasn't present there. Sean had prepared a small surprise for her. Mom, where's Madeline? Sean asked excitedly. Mrs. Rogers kept her cup on the table and replied, In her room. She hasn't come out of her room since morning. By the way, what are you carrying in your hand? Before Sean could say anything, Victor teased. Actually, he has prepared a small surprise for his wife. Sean glared at Victor and then answered, Actually, I bought some butterscotch ice cream for Madeline from her favorite ice cream parlor. Then what are you waiting for? Go and give this to your wife. Grandma mentioned with a grin. Sean blushed and proceeded to Madeline's room. He noticed that the door was already ajar, so he entered inside. Madeline was gazing out the window. Sean did not want to startle her, so he faked a coughing sound. Madeline heard a voice and turned around. When she noticed Sean inside of her room, she grew nervous. What are you doing here? I have bought something for you. Sean mentioned and handed over a parcel to her. For me? But why? What is in this bag? Madeline probed in a concerned tone. Your favorite butterscotch ice cream. Sean replied with a smile. As soon as she heard this, Madeline quickly grabbed the bag from Sean's hand. It happened on such an impulse that she herself didn't know what she was doing. Sean was really elated. He had thought that he would have to persuade Madeline into accepting this gift, but she had taken it on her own. But suddenly, Madeline felt guilty and awkward for her childish reaction. Before she could return the parcel, Sean immediately held her hand and took her to the balcony. When they arrived at the balcony, Madeline freed herself from his grasp and inquired, Why did you bring me here? Sorry, Madeline. I thought that you would feel better here. I just wanted to enlighten your mood. That's it. Sean mentioned and asked her to sit on the chair. As Madeline sat down, Sean opened the parcel and took out the cup of ice cream. He had only bought a single cup, thinking Madeline would share this with him. But when Madeline started eating, she didn't even think of Sean for a second. Sean was waiting for her to ask till the very last bite, but she never did. Just as Madeline was about to finish the ice cream, Sean snatched the spoon from her hand and started eating the last bite. This shocked Madeline. Whoa, what are you doing? Why did you take my spoon? If you wanted to have some of it, you should have told me. Madeline mentioned with annoyance in her voice. What could I do? You didn't even glance at me, so I took it and I ate it by myself. Sean replied. They looked at each other for a while and then burst out laughing. After a while, Sean told Madeline, Well, today I spoke with the doctor about Grandma's health. He told me to take her out for a while. He said that an outing would be beneficial for her health. Listening to Sean, Madeline happily replied, Wow, that's wonderful. Yes, actually, I have planned a short vacation for her and the rest of the family. Sean mentioned, Oh, so where are you guys going? Madeline asked, What do you mean by you guys? Won't you join us? Sean immediately asked, Who, me? What would I do there? After all, it's your family and... Madeline was about to speak when Sean kept his finger on her lips. Shh, now, no more discussions. You are coming with us and that's final. Sean declared. Madeline looked into his eyes. 
both of them were so lost in one another, when suddenly, Sean received a call. This sudden sound brought both of them out of their trance. Madeline felt embarrassed and went back to her room. When Sean saw that the call was from Victor, he was further maddened. Victor's timing was always wrong. What the hell, Victor? Didn't you know that I was with Sarah? Sean muttered in an infuriated voice. Oh, I'm sorry, Sean. There was an important file that needed to be looked into. It is urgent. Victor apologized, which calmed Sean down. He resolved Victor's query over the call and then proceeded to his room to change his clothes. When he came down for dinner, the entire family had assembled. Sean thought it was the perfect opportunity to announce his plan. So, I wanted to tell everyone something. Due to Grandma's health, the doctor has suggested taking her out, so I have planned a short vacation for all of us. Just for two days. Everyone was pleased after hearing the news. Wow, Sean, that's so nice. Where is the venue? Mrs. Rogers asked. Yeah, so we are going to Miami. It would be perfect for a family vacation. Sean replied. Hillary was incredibly excited about this vacation. Sean informed them that they would be leaving tomorrow. Adam and Victor's family was also accompanying the Rogers. After dinner, Lily was talking to Natalie over a call. Lily, I am so happy that we are going together to Miami, but there is a problem. I don't want Casey to come with us. Natalie mentioned. Lily responded, We are on the same page, Natalie. I too don't want Casey to come along with us. I don't know why I feel like she is not on good terms with Madeline. Hmm, but do you think she will come? And who would inform her about this trip? Natalie wondered. Back in Sean's room, Hillary was talking to Casey over a call. During the conversation, Hillary told her about their vacation to Miami. She also informed her that Joel had left for Canada, but Madeline was staying at the Rogers mansion. Hillary was telling all of this with great enthusiasm, but Casey, on the other hand, was raging with anger. Cutie pie, I will talk to you later, okay? Now you go and sleep. You have to leave tomorrow, right? Bye, love you. Casey mentioned and cut the call. She then began thinking to herself, If that Madeline is going with the Rogers, then this is a big problem. What if she and Sean come together during this trip? I really need to do something. As she lay on her bed, Casey started plotting against Madeline. The following day, everyone got ready and gathered in the living room. They were all ready to leave, but to everyone's surprise, Casey entered the mansion with a suitcase. Everyone looked at her in bewilderment. Casey, what are you doing here early in the morning? Sean asked. Actually, Sean, last night Hillary told me that all of your family were going on a vacation. And she asked me to join you guys. Casey mentioned. Yes, Dada, please let Casey come with us. Hillary insisted. Of course, Casey, please join us. I am really sorry. I forgot to invite you personally. Sean replied. Sean treated Casey like his best friend, and he could not deny her. But Lily and Natalie didn't like Casey joining them. They knew that Casey was hostile towards Madeline and wondered what she was up to this time. Episode 303 The Trip Lily and Natalie were well aware of Casey's nefarious intentions and were unwilling to take her on the vacation. But when Sean acknowledged her presence, they didn't have any other choice. Everybody came out of the Rogers mansion, where some cars were already waiting for them. Taking Hillary in his arms, Sean commented, Come on, guys, take your seats and let's enjoy our journey. Everyone smiled seeing Sean's enthusiasm. It had been a long time since the entire family had gone for an outing together. Grandma, Mr. Rogers, and Mrs. Rogers sat in one car, while Lily, Adam, Ivy, Kevin, and Skylar sat in the other. Victor and Natalie sat along with Katie in their car, but Casey and Madeline were still left. Sean had decided to sit with Madeline and Hillary in one car. Natalie called Casey and offered her a seat. Casey, you can join us. We still have a place in our car. Hearing Natalie, Lily also tried to convince her. Yes, Casey, you can just ride with Natalie and Victor. And Madeline, you should go and step into Sean's car. That's the only car available. But Casey was too cunning to be deceived by these tricks. She immediately refused. Thanks, Natalie, for offering me a seat, but I prefer to go along with my cutie pie. Right, baby? Hillary innocently responded. 
Why not, Casey? Come join us. Casey had seized the opportunity to sit with Sean in his car. Natalie and Lily knew that Casey was exploiting Hillary's innocence for her own selfish gains. Sean was also a bit disappointed when she proceeded to his car. He just wanted to spend some family time with his wife and daughter, but he wouldn't be able to do so in Casey's presence. Disappointedly, Sean took the driver's seat. Casey was about to sit beside Sean in the front seat when Sean immediately denied. Casey, you came with us for Hillary, so it would be better if you sat beside her. Madeline, you would have to come in front. Casey was enraged when she heard Sean's response. Nevertheless, she thought that sitting in the back seat would allow her to listen to Sean and Madeline's conversations, so she agreed. As everyone took their seats, the journey began. For Sean, this trip was just an excuse to compel Madeline to spill the beans on why she had changed her identity. As he was driving, Sean was stealing glances at Madeline from time to time. This did not go unnoticed by Casey, and seeing Sean enamored with Madeline really infuriated her. Casey, if you are willing to come with us, why did you refuse when I asked you over the phone? Hillary suddenly asked Casey. She was puzzled as to what to reply. She was only joining them on this trip to separate Madeline from Sean. Otherwise, she had no interest in any kind of family trip with the Rogers. She let out an awkward laugh and then stated, Oh, actually, I wasn't interested at first. Then I thought, if I wanted to move on in my life, I would have to take the first step. And what is better than enjoying this trip with my loved ones? Sean didn't even hear Casey's reply because his entire attention was diverted towards Madeline. On the other hand, Madeline was looking out of the window and contemplating. The cool breeze had disheveled her hair, but she still looked quite elegant. Suddenly, Madeline caught Sean's gaze on her, which made her cautious. She tucked a strand of hair behind her ears and remarked, Mr. Rogers, I think you should focus on your driving. How can I focus on anything when you are here? Sean mumbled to himself. What did you just say? Madeline asked when she heard Sean. Oh, nothing. Sean mentioned and started smiling to himself. Casey was boiling in anger when she heard their conversation. What the hell is going on here? I was here to separate Madeline from Sean, but he is bent on flirting with her. Casey angrily muttered to herself. She thought of ways to pull Sean's attention away from Madeline. Sean, have you planned what we will do after getting there? I'm really curious to know. I hope you don't mind me taking along with you and Hillary. We will click so many pictures and have lots of fun, Casey mentioned. Casey, let me remind you that we are not here for any vacation. We are going there for Grandma to make her happy, so we won't be leaving Grandma's side. Sean retorted. Hearing his reply, Casey felt dejected. For a long time, they kept on driving, when suddenly Sean received a call from Victor. Victor mentioned that the family was halting near a hotel to have lunch. Sean agreed. After a while, everyone parked their cars and stepped inside. The hotel was small and an elegant place, surrounded by palm trees. Everyone took their respective seats. There was a seat beside Sean, and he wanted Madeline to sit next to him. Casey was about to go to Sean when Lily clutched her hand and made her sit beside her. Where are you going, Casey? I so want to talk to you, but I wasn't able to. So today, we will eat together. Casey had no choice but to sit next to Lily. Sean gestured a thank you to Lily as Madeline took her seat beside him. Everybody started scrolling through the menu, and Sean took special care to order Sarah's favorite dishes, including fried chicken and ice cream shake. After their lunch, everyone decided to rest for a bit. About an hour later, everyone decided to leave. I need to go to the washroom, Casey mentioned. Hearing her, Mrs. Rogers responded, Fine, but take someone with you. That would be better. I'll go with her. Madeline smiled and followed Casey. However, Casey did not like Madeline's presence one bit, but she had no choice but to let Madeline accompany her. Everyone was waiting for Casey and Madeline to return. After a while, Casey came and muttered, I am sorry for having kept you all waiting for this long. Let's go now. When they saw Casey alone, everyone stood baffled. Sean anxiously asked, Wait, where's Madeline? She was with you, right? What? Wait? She isn't here? I thought she might have joined you guys by now. Casey replied with a straight face. Before Sean could say anything further, Mrs. Rogers inquired, 
What do you mean, Casey? She was giving you company, so how would you not know? Mrs. Rogers, Madeline tagged along with me, but then she said that she was feeling thirsty. I told her to go. I thought she might have been here with you guys by now. Casey replied. Natalie and Lily knew that Casey had plotted something against Madeline. Lily asserted, Sean, I think you should go and check. This place is new for Madeline. She might find it difficult to get back to us. Sean quickly ran towards the washroom and searched for Madeline, but she was nowhere to be found. His blood ran cold. The fear of losing his Sarah again made him restless. Suddenly, Sean saw Madeline in one of the alleys of the hotel. He heaved a sigh of relief and started interrogating. Madeline, where were you? We were so worried, are you fine? Yes, actually, I had lost my way. Madeline mumbled in a low tone. Everyone took their seats in the car and continued the journey. An hour later, they all reached their venue. Sean had booked a house by the lake. It was an exquisite rented house surrounded by forest on the right side. The backside of the house had a garden filled with a variety of flowers. Everyone praised Sean for the choice he had made. The rent house was quite airy and spacious, with a total of eight rooms. As soon as Madeline came to her allotted room, she quickly shut the door and began dialing someone on her phone. She had been waiting for this moment for so long. Hello, how is my baby? She spoke over the phone. Judging from her face, one could make out that she was really elated to talk to this person. Yes, I am good. Mama, I will come soon and visit you. Madeline was talking over the phone when someone knocked on the door. This really scared Madeline to death. She quickly cut the call and opened the door. It was Katie. I have got some coffee. Katie smiled and handed a cup over to Madeline. Katie noticed that Madeline's face seemed really nervous. Are you all right? Your face seems red. Katie asked in a concerned tone. Yeah, I am good, just tired. Madeline replied hesitantly. As Katie left the room, Madeline again shut the door. She was thinking again of dialing the number, but she realized that it was not a safe space. She lay on her bed and in a while, drifted off to sleep. In the evening, when she woke up, Madeline washed her face and went out. The house was filled with silence, which scared her. She started checking the rooms, but found that all of them were empty. She called out everyone's names, but got no response. This made her more anxious. Madeline was now trembling in fear, thinking, why did everyone suddenly leave her all alone? She panicked and ran towards the garden, where she saw the silhouette of a man who was laughing out loud. It was dark, due to which she wasn't able to see anything. But his laughter spooked Madeline out of her skin. Episode 304 Sean's Strategy when Madeline heard the strange laughter of a man echoing in the house, she was beyond scared. She picked up a fire iron lying near the mantelpiece and proceeded towards the direction of the sound. The man was laughing on the call. Just as she was about to hit him, he immediately turned around and screamed in fear. Whoa, Madeline, what are you up to? Are you trying to kill me or what? It was Sean. Hearing his voice, Madeline heaved a sigh of relief. Sean took the fire iron from her hand. Come on now, I know you don't like me, but that doesn't mean you can attack me like this. Sean mentioned sarcastically. Madeline wiped off the sweat that had formed on her forehead and apologized. I am sorry, Sean. When I saw myself left all alone in the house, I was scared, and I wasn't able to recognize your face. I thought a stranger had intruded inside, so I am sorry for misunderstanding you. Yeah, right. A misunderstanding that could have taken my life. Sean further teased her. Okay, I am sorry. Now tell me, where is everybody? Nobody seems to be here. Madeline inquired. Sean smiled for a moment and then answered. Actually, everyone has gone for an outing. There is a mall situated a few miles away from here, so they went there. It might take a while for them to come back. Sean replied. If everyone has gone out, then why are you here? And why did nobody wake me up? Madeline mentioned annoyingly. To be alone in this house with Sean really made her nervous. Well, you seemed quite tired, so nobody wanted to disturb you. Sean responded. Madeline did not reply back to Sean and came inside. Without uttering a single word, Madeline came in. 
She sat on the couch and began chiding herself for almost hitting Sean. You are so stupid, Madeline. Why did you pull such a stunt? You were about to hit him, and that too, with an iron rod. What if he had been hurt? But I was not at fault. If he laughs like a monster in the dark, who would not get scared? Madeline mumbled to herself. Sean, who was standing near the corridor, laughed, listening to her complaints. Madeline suddenly felt hungry and proceeded towards the small kitchen on the left. Just as she was searching for something to eat, Sean walked up to her. I thought you were planning to kill and eat me. Sean joked. Madeline was irritated by his constant sarcasm. Mr. Rogers, please stop mocking me. I have already apologized. What else do you want from me? Madeline retorted. After her reprimand, Sean became silent like an obedient school kid. Madeline took some pasta from the cupboard and put it to a boil. Sean kept on looking at her and smiled. He was reminiscing about the time that Sarah had cooked him pasta at Adam's house. What a wonderful evening that had been. When Madeline saw him smiling without any reason, she wondered what was going through his mind. Where are you lost? Those who laugh without any reason are called mad, Madeline stated. Yeah, you are right. I am mad in your love, blurted Sean quietly. What? What did you say? Madeline probed. Nothing. I was just saying. Will you eat all that pasta by yourself? I stayed here for you, so don't you think you should reward me with something? Sean mentioned, trying to deflect the conversation. Well, you shouldn't have wasted your time for me. You should have gone with them. Madeline replied. And what would you do? Would you stay here all alone? If you want, we can still go there. Sean offered. It's okay. When they are about to arrive, we have no reason to go. Madeline immediately rejected Sean's prospect. Sean had purposely lied to Madeline. He had planned all of this and had asked the others to leave the house while Madeline was fast asleep. He had just wanted to spend some time alone with her. While Madeline was preparing pasta in the kitchen, Sean kept adorning her beauty. He was bedazzled by Madeline. As she was chopping the basil, Madeline was constantly distracted by her hair, which was sliding onto her face. Before Madeline could do anything, Sean got up and gently used his hands to help her out. This sudden act bewildered Madeline. They both stared at one another, hypnotized by each other's aura. Sean was so close to Madeline that he could feel her breath. When she saw Sean this close to her, she closed her eyes in response. It was as if she was waiting for him to kiss her. Sean bent a little towards her face, but instead of kissing, he commented with a mischievous grin on his face. Well, your pasta sauce is burning. I don't like eating burnt stuff. His voice had dropped to a seductive whisper, and Madeline was drawn into him. But she composed herself. Please go out. I'll serve you when I'm done. She ordered without looking Sean in the eye. Sean smiled and then left the kitchen. On the other hand, everyone was heading towards the mall in their cars. Sean was desperately waiting for this moment, and finally the time has come. I wonder what those two lovebirds might be up to. Natalie mentioned and started giggling. Everyone was laughing at this, but Casey was boiling in anger. The reason for which she had joined this trip was not at all successful. She did not even want to come to the mall. Since the evening, everyone was planning to leave Sean and Madeline alone together in the room. Sean, we are leaving. This is the best opportunity to force Madeline to let the cat out of the bag. Everything depends on you now. Got it? Mrs. Rogers had mentioned before leaving. Hearing her conversation, Casey had made up her mind not to join the group. I think I won't be able to join you guys. I have a severe headache. Casey had cooked up an excuse, but Lily and Natalie knew what Casey was planning. Before Casey could elaborate on her excuse, Lily interrupted. You should definitely come with us. Sitting at home won't do any good to you. Come with us, breathe some fresh air, and you will feel better. Lily insisted. Come on, Casey. We will have loads of fun together, and your headache will disappear in a jiffy. Come with us, please. Hillary also pleaded to Casey. When everyone kept on persuading her, Casey had no choice. She had to agree to accompany them, reluctantly. 
God damn it, why am I stuck here with these stupid people? I should have now pretended to sleep. This would have helped me stay close to Sean, but now, what will I do? This time, even Hillary didn't help me out. I wonder what the two of them might be doing all alone. Casey thought to herself. As she was sitting in the car, she had a troubled expression on her face. If Madeline spills the beans and reveals her identity, what would she do? This would make it more difficult for her to get back to Sean. Meanwhile, Sean was sitting on the couch and was eagerly waiting for Madeline. In a while, she came out of the kitchen carrying a tray that contained two bowls of pasta. She handed over a bowl to Sean and replied, Here, take it. Oh, thanks a ton, Madeline, asserted Sean with a smile, but Madeline did not react. Suddenly, Sean dropped the bowl from his hand. Oh God, my pasta! Sean shouted. Madeline was shocked. She instantly got up from the couch. God, are you alright? Did you burn yourself somewhere? Madeline inquired. The worried expression on her face delighted Sean. I'm fine, but my pasta dropped. What a pity. Sean answered, making a pitiful face. You don't need to worry about that. You can have mine. Madeline offered. But you are hungry. Sean exclaimed, but Madeline wasn't ready to listen to him. Doesn't matter. Let's share this, okay? Madeline proposed. Sean's happiness knew no bounds as he heard this. He had intentionally dropped his pasta just so he and Madeline could share from the same bowl. After having pasta, they started talking about random things. Madeline was waiting for the others to come back, but she did not know that Sean had other plans. Suddenly, Sean received a call. He knew what the call was about and intentionally attended it on speaker mode so that Madeline could also hear the conversation. Hello, Sean. Actually, we cannot come back tonight. There's been a problem. Adam spoke on the other end. When Madeline heard this, she was shocked. What? Why, Adam? What happened? Madeline probed. On the other end, Adam was trying his best to control his laughter. Actually, our car broke down. We are still a few miles away from the house, and Grandma isn't feeling well, so we have decided to check in to a nearby hotel for the night. Grandma needs some rest. We will see you guys tomorrow. Adam replied in a somber tone. The way Adam elaborated upon the situation really worried Madeline. How's Grandma? Is she all right? Sean inquired. Yeah, she's fine. Ivy and Lily are there, with her. Anyways, we are going to check in. See you guys tomorrow. Adam responded and disconnected the call. Madeline was left perturbed by the news. She did not want to stay all alone in the guest house, and that too, with Sean. On the other hand, Sean was giggling inside. All of this had been a part of his plan. He had purposefully sent everyone out and asked them not to come back tonight. Everything was going according to plan. Episode 305 Alone in the Lake House When Madeline learned that the rest of the family would not be returning for the night, her nervousness reached its peak. She was already uncomfortable spending a couple of hours with Sean, and now that period had been extended for the entire night. Oh, what should we do now? Only two of us are present in such a big house. We will be staying here alone tonight. Sean mentioned in an innocent voice as if he had no share in orchestrating this plan. Madeline looked at him worriedly. Sean proceeded to his room and came out with his wallet. Madeline, I'm going to buy some dinner. Make sure to lock the door properly, okay? Sean announced. When Sean mentioned this, Madeline's heartbeat escalated. She did not want to be left alone in this house, and that too, at night. What? Please don't go now. Don't leave me alone, please. Madeline replied in a pleading voice. If I don't go out now, then what will we eat for dinner? Sean mentioned. You can order it online, can't you? So what is the need to go there? Please stay. Madeline suggested. Oh, so you are scared? Well, you don't need to worry. You can intimidate anyone with that iron rod, like you scared me back in the garden. Sean taunted Madeline and started laughing. Madeline glared at him. Sean, don't you think you are overreacting? Stop making fun of me. I thought you were a burglar and that is why I had an iron rod in my hand. Madeline grunted. What, a burglar? Like, seriously? Do I look like a thief? Have you ever seen a thief as handsome as me in your life? Sean retorted. 
This brought a smile to Madeline's face. Suddenly, the lights went out, and darkness enveloped everything. Madeline let out a sharp cry and held Sean's hands in fear. Sean, please stay near me. I am scared of the dark. Madeline requested. Don't worry, Madeline. Sean replied. He was ecstatic to feel Madeline's hands in his palms. How come the lights went off all of a sudden? Madeline wondered. I have no idea. I need to go check. I'm going out. Sean left Madeline's hand and proceeded to go outside. When Madeline again blocked his way, No, don't leave me alone. I will come with you, she muttered in a petrified voice. Sean turned on the flashlight on his phone and opened the door. Madeline also followed behind him. The lights went off due to a power failure. I think it's because of the weather. Sean explained after checking. Now what should we do? Lights went off and we are alone in this house. Madeline probed in an anxious voice. Hmm, you are right. There might be candles available in the kitchen or living room. We could light them till the power is back. Sean suggested, and holding Madeline's trembling hand, came inside. With their flashlights, they started to search for candles. Sean was just opening one of the drawers when he suddenly heard the sound of Madeline screaming. Sean immediately abandoned his search and frantically rushed towards the kitchen. Madeline, are you okay? Sean asked, seeing a terrified Madeline. Madeline clutched Sean's shirt and pointed towards the kitchen cabinet. Something is in that place. Something is definitely there. Sean went forward and opened the cabinet. A lizard leaped out of it and then swiftly climbed onto the walls. Sean looked back at Madeline and then burst into laughter. Oh God, you were scared by a lizard. I thought you had seen a ghost. Sean laughed. Madeline felt embarrassed, but she quickly nudged the topic aside and asked, Did you find any candles? Yeah, I just did. Sean replied and took out some candles from the kitchen cabinet. Both of them came back to the living room, where Sean lit up the candles. Soon, the entire room was glowing with yellow flames. Amidst this light, Madeline's face shined brightly. Sean was trying his best to avoid any eye contact with Madeline, but she looked so ethereal that Sean was constantly distracted by her face. He controlled himself and started searching for some food outlets nearby for dinner. Soon, he found a perfect restaurant and ordered all of Sarah's favorite delicacies. After a while, the food was finally delivered, and Madeline started assembling the plates on the table. Since the electricity had still not come on, both of them had to eat by the light of the candles. In a way, it ended up being a perfect candlelight dinner for both of them. As they ate, Sean could not help but look at Madeline's face. He wanted to embrace her, right then and there, but he could not. Just as she finished her meal, Madeline went to the kitchen to fetch some water. Suddenly, a loud thud came from the kitchen, which even shocked Sean. Madeline immediately rushed out of the kitchen and hugged Sean tightly. Sean was baffled. Once again, a similar sound repeated itself which further frightened Madeline, and her hold on Sean became tighter. Hey, it's okay, let me go and check. Sean gently assured Madeline and proceeded to the kitchen. When his eyes went towards the window, Sean finally understood the source of this noise. Due to the strong winds outside, the kitchen windows were banging against each other. Sean smiled and quickly shut them one by one. Although Madeline had embraced him due to fear, Sean was still glad to feel her touch. It's okay, it's just the windows. Sean assured her. Madeline heaved a sigh of relief, but she again felt really embarrassed by her recent interaction with Sean. She chided herself for getting scared so easily. Please don't misunderstand me. I am very easily scared and that is why I embraced you. I am sorry. Madeline apologized. No worries. Sean affirmed and came closer to her. Both of them were just inches apart from each other. Suddenly, a flower vase that was kept near the window ceiling fell due to the wind. This sudden jolt brought Madeline back to her senses. She opened her eyes and immediately parted away from Sean. Just as she moved backwards, a sharp fragment from the broken vase pierced her feet. Ouch! Madeline let out a sharp whimper. Sean immediately came towards her and inquired, Are you all right? What happened? No, that piece of flower vase pricked my leg. Ouch, it's really painful. 
The pain was really overwhelming. By now, the cold wind had entered the house through the windows and had blown out all of the candles. Again, it was extremely dark. Madeline, you stay here. I'll close the windows and light the candles again. Let me check if there is any first aid box available. Sean mentioned and was about to go when Madeline held his hand. No, don't. Please don't go anywhere. I can't stay here alone. You know how scared I am of the dark. And these loud noises are doing no good. I am really scared right now. Madeline uttered in a frightened voice. Hearing her restlessness, Sean smiled. Relax, Madeline. Don't worry. I am here with you. We will have to light the candles anyway, right? Otherwise, you will feel more scared. Sean explained. Madeline nodded her head and let him go. Sean closed all the windows and began lighting the candles in the living room. Madeline tried to move towards the couch, but her legs slipped when she tried to get up. Oh God, Madeline, you are bleeding! Sean exclaimed, seeing Madeline's blood-stained feet. All of a sudden, Sean held her in his arms and lovingly placed her on the couch. Madeline was so astonished by his quick move that she could not resist when Sean held her. She just kept staring at him. After comfortably placing her on the couch, Sean went to his room and returned with a first aid box. Thank God I found this. Come, show me your leg. Let me see. Saying this, Sean gently kept her leg on his lap. It's okay, it's just a light scratch. I'll be fine soon. Madeline mentioned. A light scratch? Are you kidding me? You have a piece of glass pierced inside your leg. Sean chided Madeline. He gently removed the bits of the glass from her feet and began applying an ointment. Madeline had no choice but to give in to Sean's care. On the other hand, Casey was in the hotel with the Rogers family. She was fuming in anger. What all is happening over here? I just wished to spend some time with Sean, but now I am stuck here, and this girl Madeline is trying to snatch him away from me. But I will not let this happen. Those two are all alone at the lake house. If something happened between the two of them, what would I do? No, nothing will happen. Casey thought to herself. These nagging thoughts were not letting her sleep. She got up and decided to give a call to Sean. Meanwhile, Sean was bandaging Madeline's wounds. Done. See, it looks better now. Sean mentioned with a smile. Thank you, Sean. Madeline replied with gratitude. Sean was just looking at her when suddenly his phone buzzed. It was Casey's call. Why is she calling me this late? It's 11 p.m. already. Are they facing any problem? Sean thought to himself and answered the call. Hey, Casey, what happened? Why are you calling me now? I mean, it's too late. Is everything all right? Sean asked. Yes, Sean, everything is fine here. I just called to ask if you had your dinner or not. Casey spoke on the other end. Sean took a deep breath and answered. So you called me to ask this? Yes, Madeline and I had dinner. By the way, are you still up? Sean probed. Actually, I couldn't sleep. Casey replied with a smile on her face. Then you should go for a walk. Sean mentioned with slight annoyance in his voice. Casey was finding ways to talk to Sean, but he was constantly nudging her off. Oh, as you say then, I'll go for a walk. By the way, how is Madeline? Casey asked. Oh, Madeline is fine. She is sitting next to me. Casey, I'll talk to you later. Saying this, Sean ended the call abruptly. This sudden move astonished Casey. The words, She is sitting next to me, reverberated in her ears. She thought to herself, What does he mean by that? Are they sleeping together? Did they get close to each other? No, no, this can't happen. Sean and Madeline can never get together. I have to do something. After talking to Sean, Casey got more anxious and started fidgeting around the room. Back in the lake house, Sean looked at his phone and saw that it was almost about midnight. It's too late now. I think we should go to our rooms and sleep. Sean suggested. Hearing this, Madeline lowered her head and started fiddling with her fingers. Looking at her reaction, Sean wondered why she wasn't responding. Madeline, what's going on? Aren't you sleepy? Sean asked again. Actually, that is not the case, Madeline stammered. Then... Sean wondered. Madeline took a deep breath and mumbled. Actually, I am scared of the dark. Moreover, there is no power, so I can't sleep all alone in my room. Listening to her concerns, Sean laughed. So this was it. Fine, if that's the case, you can sleep on the couch here. I'm going to my room. Sean mentioned. 
He was about to leave when Madeline pleaded. No, please don't leave me alone. I can't stay here all by myself. Hearing her request, Sean couldn't refuse her and decided to sit on the couch. After a while, both of them drifted off to sleep. Just as dawn broke, Casey started convincing the others to get back to the lake house. When everyone arrived, the door was locked from inside. Victor had a separate set of keys, so he didn't care to knock. Casey was desperately waiting to get in. As soon as the door opened, Casey was the first to get inside. But when she entered the living room, she couldn't believe the scene in front of her eyes. Sean and Madeline had been sleeping on the same couch, and their bodies seemed so close to one another. Casey could not control her rage when she saw this sight. She shouted in anger, Sean! Episode 306, Hillary is Missing. Seeing Sean and Madeline sleeping this close to each other, Casey went ballistic. Sean! She cried out. Her howl drew everyone's attention towards her. Casey, why are you shouting like that? What happened? Mrs. Rogers asked. Casey suddenly realized what she had done. She composed herself and smiled. Oh, I am sorry. I didn't mean to shout like that. I just wanted to wake up Sean. See, it's already so late and both of them are still sleeping. Casey mentioned, trying to hide her anger beneath the fake smile. Hearing the commotion around them, Sean and Madeline were also jolted from their deep slumbers. Madeline rubbed her eyes and looked at everyone. She also realized that she and Sean were really close to each other. Madeline immediately got up. Actually, there was a power cut in the house and it was dark, so I had asked Sean to sleep here. Madeline muttered. Her face was red with embarrassment, and it was almost as if she was trying to defend herself. Everyone smiled and looked at her. It's okay, Madeline. Why are you so scared? Assured Grandma. No, nothing Madeline replied and rushed towards her room. As she left, everyone burst into laughter and looked at Sean with body eyes but Sean immediately deflected off their gaze. Come on, everybody get ready. We have to go to the amusement park as well, right? Sean reminded. After hearing Sean, everyone proceeded to their respective rooms to get dressed for the day. Soon, everyone gathered in the living room after dressing up and packing their stuff. The family had decided to return to Orlando after the trip to the amusement park. Hillary and Sean were the first ones to show up in the hall. Soon, Casey also joined them. She had worn a revealing outfit to attract Sean, but Sean did not even pay attention to her. His eyes were eagerly waiting to see someone else. As soon as Madeline came out of her room, Sean was bedazzled by her beauty. Although she was only wearing a simple knee-length dress, she still looked ethereal. Everyone is here, so why waste time? Mrs. Rogers announced, and everyone proceeded outside. Sean had booked a minivan so that the family could enjoy the trip together. As everyone went inside, Casey was trying ways to sit beside Sean, but before she could reach there, Hillary called out to Madeline. Madeline, please sit with Dada and me. Madeline could not refuse Hillary's innocent request and took a seat beside her. Sean was delighted, but Casey could not believe her ears. Even Hillary had been swept off her feet by Madeline. Casey sat behind them and glared at Madeline. So, now my cutie pie doesn't need me anymore. That is why she doesn't want to sit with me, right? Casey said with a pout. Casey, Hillary is just a kid. What do you expect her to do? Wherever she feels a sense of belonging, she would sit there. Sean answered. Casey was silenced. She quietly took her seat beside the window and started staring outside. No matter what she did... Sean was not paying her any attention. About half an hour later, they finally arrived at their destination. It was a lovely amusement park beside a waterfall. Hillary and Skylar jumped in joy when they saw the number of rides and games available for kids. The park also had a renowned spa for the elderly, which offered massages and other therapeutic services. First, we should have some breakfast, right? Victor suggested. Everybody headed towards the food court. 
Hillary sat beside Madeline, who was helping her with the food. Madeline, you here makes me delighted. Please, never leave us. Hillary commented as she ate her bagel. Madeline chuckled at Hillary's words. Oh, so you want to stay with me? Okay then, it's decided that when I go to Canada, I'll take you along with me, okay? Madeline replied. No, I can't leave my data. Hillary mentioned. If I leave with you, then who will take care of my data? You have no idea how careless he is. Everyone burst into laughter at Hillary's response. Sean was also laughing at how cute his little princess was complaining about him. After having their breakfast, Mrs. Rogers and Grandma decided to retreat to the spa. Let's do one thing. You kids should go and enjoy the park. Grandma, me, and Vincent will go to the spa to relax. Mrs. Rogers suggested. Everyone nodded their heads and proceeded to the amusement park. Hillary clutched Madeline's fingers and went along with her. Skylar also tagged along with the duo. Sean was delighted to see this flourishing bond between them. All of them tried various exciting rides, from a mini roller coaster to the Ferris wheel. They also went into a spooky haunted house, and Hillary was so scared that she remained glued to Madeline all along the way. After playing for a while, Madeline, Skylar, and Hillary were exhausted. Hillary requested Madeline to bring some water. Madeline instantly got up and went to the nearest store to buy some juice for the three of them. But when Madeline returned, she was surprised to see that Hillary and Skylar were no longer present there. Soon, she spotted Skylar coming out of the washroom. Skylar, where's Hillary? Madeline asked frantically. I don't know, she was just here. Skylar replied worriedly. Madeline's feet froze in their place. She and Skylar immediately went looking for Hillary, calling out her name. They searched every nook and cranny of the place, but there was no sight of Hillary. After a while, Madeline thought it was best to inform Sean. She rushed towards the pavilion where Sean was standing with the rest. Sean, I can't find Hillary. She was just here and now. Madeline nervously mumbled. She was breathing heavily and was unable to speak coherently. Sean was stunned when he heard this. Madeline, calm down. Tell me what happened. Sean came near her. Sean, I can't find Hillary. She was thirsty, so I went to fetch some drinks, but when I came back, she was nowhere to be found. Madeline replied anxiously. There were also tears in her eyes. Hearing her, Sean was perturbed. Did you search everywhere? Maybe she is just playing around somewhere. Sean probed. No, Sean, I have searched every single spot, but I couldn't find her. Madeline responded. Everybody was now deathly worried and started searching for Hillary. Hillary! Hillary! They shouted in unison to locate Hillary. Victor, meanwhile, rushed to inform the park authorities about this. When Sean returned empty-handed for a while, Madeline broke down and started to sob uncontrollably. Everyone was trying to handle her. Relax, Madeline. Nothing will happen to Hillary. We will find her. Sean consoled her. I don't want to hear anything, Sean. I want my Hillary back. Otherwise, I won't be able to forgive myself. Madeline replied sobbingly. Her statement caught everyone off guard, the way Madeline had referred to Hillary as my Hillary really confounded everyone. But this was no time to contemplate upon her statement as everyone was already preoccupied with searching for Hillary. Suddenly, Sean heard a voice from behind him. Dada! He turned around and was surprised to see Hillary. She was in the arms of one of the amusement park guards. Sean immediately rushed towards them. We found your daughter, Mr. Rogers. She was in the orchard beside the greenhouse. The guard informed. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Sean thanked the guard and took Hillary back in his arms. The guard nodded his head and left. Madeline immediately rushed to Hillary. Where were you, baby? I was so scared. Madeline asked with tears in her eyes. Hillary hugged her tightly and kissed her on the cheek. I told you not to go anywhere. Why didn't you listen to me? What if something would have happened to you? Madeline retorted. Oh, I'm fine. You don't have to worry. I just went to pick some flowers for you. Hillary replied and opened her palms. She was carrying some daffodils in her hand. But Madeline's tears were not stopping. Hey, everything is fine now, so stop crying. And Hillary, you should always inform us before going anywhere. Sean mentioned. Everyone was surprised to see Madeline, 
she had been crying for Hillary as if she was her own child. This further confirmed the truth that she was Sarah. Then why was she hiding her true identity and addressing herself as Madeline? Casey was also puzzled to see Madeline hysterically crying over Hillary. By the time the family had lunch, it was already 4 p.m. While glancing at his watch, Sean concluded, Guys, it's getting late. I think we should go back home. No, Dada, please, let's stay for a while, Hillary requested. But princess, it's getting dark here, Sean tried to explain. Dada, please, for a little while, please, please. Hillary stamped her feet on the ground. Mrs. Rogers bent towards Hillary. Princess, you know that Grandma is not feeling well these days. See, it's getting cold here, and if we don't start now, how will we reach Orlando on time? Mrs. Rogers tried to convince Hillary. Hearing Mrs. Rogers, Hillary agreed reluctantly, but her face was still sad. Madeline noticed this. I think Hillary wants to stay for a little while. I mean, if it's not a problem, you guys can head back home and we will join you in a little while, Madeline suggested. Everybody was ecstatic to hear Madeline. The fact that she was willing to spend some more time with Hillary just showed how much she cared for her. Well, that is a great idea, Madeline, but be sure to come back in time, Mrs. Rogers replied. Following this, everybody decided to leave except for Sean, Madeline, and Hillary. The chauffeurs had already come with cars to pick up the family. Since Sean wanted to spend more time with Madeline, he had asked his chauffeur, Matthew, to leave the car and go back with the family. Hillary enjoyed a few more rides with Sean and Madeline. This was the first time in Sean's life that he was actually spending time with his wife and daughter. It had to be one of the best days of his life. After a while, it was almost time to leave. Baby, it's getting dark now. We should head back home. Madeline was trying to explain to Hillary. Okay, but first we need to take a photograph. You, me, and Dada together. Hillary suggested. Madeline was amazed by her request, but she couldn't deny it. Sean asked a lady passing by to click their picture. Wow, such a lovely baby. God bless this family. The lady clicking the photograph mentioned. Madeline was surprised at her comments. Before she could clear the misconception, Sean exclaimed, Thank you so much. Somewhere deep inside, Madeline also felt pleased about this compliment. After getting their photographs clicked, they proceeded back to their car. Dada, I'm feeling very sleepy. Can I sleep in the back seat? Madeline, could you sit with Dada, please? Hillary requested. Madeline agreed and took a seat beside Sean. After a while, Hillary went to sleep. As he was driving, many thoughts were racing through Sean's mind. He wanted to confront Madeline and ask her to reveal the truth finally. He was just waiting for the right moment. Suddenly, he noticed a small ice cream parlor on the way. Hey, would you like some ice cream? Sean probed. Madeline nudged her head and smiled. Sean stepped out of the car and after a while, returned with two cups of chocolate ice cream. Madeline looked back at Hillary and saw that she was lost in her dreams. She looks so beautiful when she is asleep. Madeline remarked with a smile. Yeah. Sean replied quietly. For a while, none of them spoke a single word. Finally, Sean mustered up the courage and broke the silence. Why don't you accept the truth, Madeline, that you are my Sarah? Sean asked, looking Madeline in the eye. Madeline's spoon dropped from her hand as she heard this. She had not expected Sean to bring up this topic again. Episode 307 I Am Not Sarah as they were eating their ice cream, Sean finally decided to confront Madeline about her identity. Why don't you accept the truth, Madeline, that you are my Sarah? Sean asked, looking Madeline in the eye. When Sean suddenly asked this out of nowhere, Madeline was astonished. Her spoon dropped from her hand. I saw the way you got worried about Hillary when she went missing. Only a mother could go to this extreme. Sean continued. He was about to say something when Madeline stopped him from going any further. Excuse me, how many times have I told you that I am not Sarah? My name is Madeline. Why is this so hard for you to understand? Madeline grumbled in anger and stepped out of the car. 
But this time, even Sean was not giving up. He got out of the car and followed Madeline. He had had enough of her melodrama. Please stop this. I am fed up with all of this, Sarah. Can't you see how much we need you right now? After knowing everything, how can you act like a stranger? And why are you hiding your identity? Please tell me. Sean came near and touched Madeline, but she immediately shrugged his hand away. Sean, enough. I was just worried about Hillary because she was my responsibility at the moment. So when she disappeared, I felt guilty for leaving her alone. That is why I grew hysterical. Don't think too much, Madeline retorted, trying to avert Sean's eyes. Sarah, please stop this. I really cannot understand why you are doing this. Can't you see that your daughter needs you right now? Sean almost teared up. Enough is enough, Sean. I am not Sarah. I have told you this so many times. But now, I have had enough of all of this. I was just staying here for Grandma's sake, but I don't think I can stay here anymore. I am calling Joel and asking him to come back. After that, I am leaving for Canada. Madeline yelled. When Sean heard this, he was beyond shocked. No matter what he did, Madeline was not ready to accept the truth. He composed himself and got inside the car. Since all her luggage and passport were at the Rogers mansion, Madeline had no choice but to go back there. After a while, she too came back inside the car. Hillary was still peacefully sleeping, and Sean was relieved that she did not hear the altercation between them. As Sean started driving, both of them sat silently throughout the four-hour journey. Along the way, Sean had nothing but bitterness in his heart for Sarah. He could not believe that she would be this callous to leave her own daughter behind. All his love and affection for Sarah had vanished. On the other hand, Madeline had messaged Joel and asked him to come back as soon as possible. When they reached the Rogers mansion, both of them stepped outside of the car. Madeline was about to go and carry Hillary in her arms, but Sean immediately opened the door from the other side and took Hillary with him. He did not even look at Madeline and stormed inside the house. Sean's behavior had hurt Madeline, but she did not show it. Before going inside, she called Joel and asked him to come back. Joel could sense the tension in Madeline's voice. He consoled her and promised that he would arrive at Orlando on the latest flight. When Sean furiously entered the house without Madeline by his side, everyone was surprised. Sean, you guys are late. What took you so long to reach here? Grandma probed with a smile, but Sean acted as if he did not even hear Grandma's queries. He rushed directly to his room with Hillary in his arms. Sensing from his stern face, everyone deducted that something must have happened. After a while, Madeline entered the house and also proceeded directly to her room. Grandma called out to her, but she did not pay any heed. Everyone was left perplexed now. They had no idea why both of them were behaving like this. Back at the amusement park, both of them seemed really happy and content. Then suddenly, what had happened to them? Sean went inside his room and shut the door. He gently placed Hillary on the bed and sat down, covering his face with his palms. It was getting too much for him to bear this. Even when Sarah was close to him, she was still so far away. Sean had planned this entire vacation just to get her to acknowledge her identity, but she was not budging an inch. Why is she not accepting the truth? What is stopping her? Is she scared of someone? Why, Sarah? Why? Why are you torturing my family and me? Can't you see how much Hillary needs you? Sean mumbled to himself. On the other hand, Madeline was also crying by the window in her room. It was as if something was troubling her. Nobody will understand me. Everyone thinks I am a bad mother. No one knows the truth. Madeline was just thinking to herself when someone knocked on the door. It was Katie who had come to call her for dinner. I'll be there, Madeline replied without opening the door. She wiped her tears and was about to go downstairs when she saw Sean coming out of his room. Both of them did not even look at each other and came down to the dining table. Everyone could sense that there was hostility brewing between the two of them. This silence bothered everyone in the family. No one spoke a single word throughout this entire dinner. Adam and Victor, who were staying at the mansion for the night, decided to talk to Sean after dinner to find out what had transpired between him and Madeline. When everyone had retreated for sleep, Victor and Adam went to Sean's room. What are you guys doing here this late? Sean asked. 
He gestured for them to take a seat and closed the door. Sean, what happened? From the time you came back with Madeline, you both have been acting weird. Don't tell me that you fought with Madeline. Victor inquired worriedly. Sean remained silent for a while, but when Victor and Adam persisted, he finally agreed to spill the beans. What do you want to hear? It is all useless now, Sean mentioned. When Victor and Adam looked at him in confusion, he continued. So, when we were coming back from the amusement park, I again asked her to reveal the fact that she was Sarah. But as soon as I mentioned this, she became mad at me. She again repeated the same thing. She said that she was Madeline, and I needed to stop calling her Sarah. Guys, I can't take it anymore. I think she does not care about us. How much more can I suffer? Anyways, she's going back to Canada, so let her go. Hillary and I have lived without her for five years, and we can do the same for the rest of our lives. Sean mentioned all of this in an exasperated tone. When Victor and Adam heard that Sarah was leaving for Canada, their jaws dropped open. What? She is leaving and you're letting her go? Victor gasped. What can I do, Victor? I've had enough of this shit. We brought her here to Orlando, sent her husband away, and planned this entire vacation just so that she would finally open up. But she is adamant. What more can I do? Sean replied angrily. Sean, listen to me. You can't give up on her that easily, can you? You have waited for this moment for five years. Adam insisted. I don't care, Adam. It is her life after all. Sean retorted. He seemed really vexed and angry. Adam and Victor thought it best to leave him alone for the night. The next morning, as everyone sat down for breakfast, Madeline went up to Grandma. Grandma, now that you are doing better, I would like to ask for your leave. I really enjoyed the time I spent with you all, but now the time has come for me to go back. Joel is coming today to accompany me back to Canada. We might leave tomorrow. Madeline mentioned. As soon as Madeline announced this, everyone was taken aback. This sudden news had caught everyone off guard. But Madeline, why are you leaving so early? Can't you wait a few more days? Grandma asked anxiously. No, I can't. Please don't force me. I came here for you and now you are doing much better. So I don't think I need to stay here any longer. Madeline replied. While everyone was visibly upset with Madeline's departure, it was Hillary who was affected the most. No, please, Madeline, don't go. You have been here for just a few days. Hillary retorted. Baby, I need to go back. After all, I too have a house just like you, the way you are staying in your house. I also need to go back to mine, right? Madeline tried to explain. But this is also your house. You can stay here too, so why are you going back to Canada? Please don't go, please. Hillary insisted, banging her hands on the table. Hillary's words created havoc in Madeline's heart, but she did not show it on her face. Suddenly, Sean spoke up. It's okay, princess. If Madeline wants to go, then we can't stop her, can we? Whatever she said was right. She came here for Grandma, and now that Granny is doing fine, she has to go. Right? Sean stated. The utter coldness in Sean's voice astonished everyone. But Madeline wasn't affected by any of this. After breakfast, she retreated to her room and started packing her bag. With each item she was putting back in her suitcase... Madeline's heart was receiving a blow. Only she knew how much it was hurting her to go back. But she had to do this. After finishing the packing, Madeline did not know what to do. She had wanted to spend some time with Hillary, but she had already gone to school. Maybe I should stay away from Hillary, otherwise she would get attached to me. Madeline thought to herself. She was just immersed in her thoughts when she heard a knock on the door. When she opened it, she was startled to find Joel standing there. Surprise! Joel mentioned and hugged Madeline. Episode 308 Madeline Breaks Down Madeline was surprised to see Joel standing out of her room. He put his luggage down and hugged Madeline. Joel, I thought you were coming by the afternoon flight. Madeline exclaimed. Yeah, I initially thought I was, but then I got on the morning flight and thought of surprising you. Joel mentioned and put his bag down. He saw that Madeline had already packed all of her stuff. So, you have already packed everything? Great, we will leave by the morning flight tomorrow. Joel announced. 
When Madeline heard this, she felt a weird sensation in her heart. Somewhere deep down, this news of leaving really struck her. Meanwhile, downstairs, Mr. and Mrs. Rogers were anxiously fidgeting in their rooms. They had just received Joel, and his return had made Madeline's departure inevitable. Joel is here. That means Madeline, too, will leave with him, Mrs. Rogers mentioned. Grace, there is nothing we can do now. We have tried many ways to get Madeline to reveal the truth, but she is adamant. Mr. Rogers replied, Why is she hiding her real self from us? Vincent, I know she is our Sarah. How can she just go away like this? Doesn't she care for her daughter? Mrs. Rogers broke down. It was all too overwhelming for her fragile heart to bear. While the family was worried sick about Madeline's departure, Sean had surrendered himself to fate. He was sitting in his cabin, deeply immersed in his thoughts. If she does not want to stay with me, I won't force her. Maybe she doesn't love me anymore. But I at least want her to tell me the reason why she left me all those years ago. And where is my daughter Hannah? Why is she keeping me away from my own daughter? Sarah, why are you doing this to me? Sean thought to himself. The entire day, he could not focus on a single project. When Hillary returned from school, she got to know that Madeline would be leaving for Canada the following day. As soon as she heard this news, Hillary burst into tears. But why is she leaving me so soon? I love her so much. Hillary said to Grandma with tears in her eyes. Princess, she had to leave one day, right? Mrs. Rogers tried to explain to her. When will she come back? Is she going away forever? Hillary inquired. When everyone heard her query, they were stunned. They did not know how to reply to her innocent questions. Katie informed Madeline about Hillary's plight, but Madeline thought it best not to go and console her. That night, Joel and Madeline decided to have their dinner in the room, as Madeline did not have the courage to sit amongst the other family members, especially Hillary. She quietly had her dinner and then lay on the bed. But throughout the night, Madeline could not sleep. Fate was playing some really cruel games with her. The entire night, she kept on sobbing silently. She did not even realize how time had passed. Suddenly, Joel woke up and kissed her on the forehead. Come on, Maddie, wake up, it's time to go home. Joel announced with a smile. When she heard those words, Madeline's heart sank. She got up reluctantly and readied herself. When both of them came down with their luggage, they saw that the entire family had assembled to bid them farewell. Kevin, Ivy, Victor, Natalie, Adam, and Lily had also come to say goodbye to their Sarah once and for all. Even Casey was present to see her nemesis off. She was overjoyed by the news of Madeline's departure. Finally, she would now get Sean all to herself. Mrs. Rogers and Grandma were almost teary-eyed as they saw Madeline. Madeline herself was trying to fight off the tears, but she composed herself and looked at everyone with a smile. These seven days that I have spent here would always be memorable. Thank you for having me and treating me like your own family member. I don't know if we will ever meet again. Madeline announced. She went towards Grandma and hugged her. I hope your health continues to improve, Grandma. I will miss you a lot. Grandma was about to again insist on Madeline to stay when Joel mentioned. Come on, Maddie, the cab is outside. Yes, just one minute, Joe. Madeline replied and began to look around. It was as if she was searching for someone. Are you looking for someone? Victor probed. He knew what Madeline was looking for. Yes, I was looking for Hillary. She didn't come to see me off and even Sean... Madeline replied hesitantly, Oh, that poor thing is sick. Ever since she learned the news of your departure, she has been sobbing uncontrollably. Today she woke up with a high fever. Sean is by her side. Mrs. Rogers announced. When Madeline heard this news, she could not control herself. She dropped her luggage onto the ground and proceeded to Sean's room. The door was left slightly ajar, so Madeline entered without knocking. Hillary was lying on the bed with a cold towel over her forehead. Her face was red and just by looking at her face, one could tell that she was not feeling well. Sean was sitting by her side, worried sick. When he noticed the sound of the door, he looked back and was shocked to see Madeline standing there. As soon as he saw her, 
The muscles on his face twitched and his teeth clattered. He got up and roared. What the hell are you doing here? Madeline was taken aback by Sean's anger. I'm here to see Hillary. Madeline mumbled and proceeded towards the bed when Sean blocked her way. I don't want you to touch my daughter. Stay away from her. And why do you care about Hillary? She means nothing to you. Sean retorted, fuming in anger. I... I... I just... Madeline stammered, but she could not say anything. Sean's reprimand had jolted her to the core. Before I lose my temper, it would be best that you get out of this room. Go back to Canada or wherever. I don't care. Just get out now. Sean shouted. Madeline was in tears now. Sean, please let me see Hillary once. Madeline mumbled. Her eyes were red with grief. Just get away from her. Why do you care if Hillary lives or dies? You were never here for the last five years. I mean, what kind of mother are you anyway? Sean mentioned Madeline was overwhelmed by these accusations. Madeline was about to proceed towards Hillary, but Sean clutched her hand. Just stay away from her. Sean shouted and in his anger pushed Madeline. Madeline could not compose herself and fell on the floor. Sean felt guilty for his action. He could have never imagined that he would hurt Sarah like this one day. When Madeline lifted her face, Sean saw that a gush of tears were flowing from her eyes. She looked at Sean in the eye and began to speak. You don't know, Sean, what all I've been through in the last five years. Whatever I did was only to protect my daughters. You would never understand that pain, that loneliness. Only I know how deep I was hurt. Madeline stated with teary eyes. Saying this, Madeline broke down and started to cry profusely. Sean was shocked when he heard this. Finally, Madeline had revealed the truth to him. He looked at her. She was sitting on the floor crying uncontrollably, resembling a vulnerable little bird. Seeing her, Sean bent down and hugged her. It's okay, Sarah. Everything is all right. Sean tried to console her. Madeline clutched his shirt and hugged him back. All the repressed grief from her past came back to her. No matter how she tried, tears would not stop from her eyes. She hugged Sean and started to sob uncontrollably. All the pain that she had harbored inside her came erupting. For the last five years, her life had been nothing but a mountain of grief. It's okay, Sarah. I am here with you. Sean mentioned and gently placed his hand over her head. Suddenly, Joel entered the room. He had been waiting in the hall for Madeline, but when almost five minutes had passed, he himself decided to check. Their cab was already here. As soon as Joel entered the room, he was shocked to see Madeline crying in Sean's arms. Maddie! Joel cried out. Madeline finally looked up. She wiped her tears and composed herself. Sorry, Joel. I cannot go back with you. She replied. What? Joel was flabbergasted when he heard this. Hearing the commotion coming from Sean's room, most of the family members had also assembled outside of it. The sight of Madeline crying near Sean also came as a surprise to them. Why, Madeline? What happened? Why are you crying? Joel inquired. He was visibly perturbed by Madeline's assertions. Joel, you have been nothing but a great companion to me, but I am sorry that all these years I have been lying to you. I am not Madeline. My name is Sarah Rogers. Sarah finally revealed. Episode 309, The Revelation Sarah had finally broken down. She could no longer hide the pain and the grief she had been harboring inside her for all of these years. When Joel came up to Sean's room, he was shocked to see the person he had called Madeline crying in Sean's arms. But now, the entire family had assembled in Sean's room. Joel, you've been nothing but a great companion to me, but I am sorry that all these years I've been lying to you. I am not Madeline. My name is Sarah Rogers. Sarah mentioned, looking into Joel's eyes. Joel was horrified to learn this. The entire family was shaken. When Sarah finally acknowledged her identity, Sarah got up from the floor and went towards everyone. I know that I played a sick game with you all, but believe me, I had no choice. What I did was only for my daughters. Sarah announced. Tears had welled up in her eyes. Honey, we knew you were hiding something from us, but tell us what happened that you left us five years ago and never returned. 
Mrs. Rogers asked. Sarah composed herself and got up. I am ready to tell you everything, but I think we should first go to the hall. Katie, could you please sit with Hillary? Sarah asked. Katie nodded her head. The entire family proceeded to the hall. Joel also followed from behind. He could not believe what he had just heard about his fiance. He quickly sent away the cab and came back to the hall. Sarah was sitting on one of the couches, drinking a glass of water. Everyone had surrounded her. Firstly, I want to apologize for everything I did to you. And Adam, believe me, the time I saw you in Chicago, I cannot describe how happy I was to look at you. But I had to pretend. I wanted to stay away from all of you, so I put on this cover. Sarah mentioned. She paused for a moment. The family was eagerly looking at Sarah, anticipating her to reveal her side of the story. It all happened five years ago, when I had gone to attend the conference to secure a deal with Corbin Miles's company. I did not know that my life would change so drastically that day. Sarah began narrating. Five years ago. When I had gone to London for the conference, I vividly remembered that there was one gentleman who seemed especially hostile to my presence. I had brought Hannah along with me for the meeting, and it was getting difficult for me to control her. He was standing there, with his assistant, passing remarks and questioning my abilities as a working mother. He was also from Orlando and was constantly undermining my talents. But there was something else about this man. The way he was looking at me. It was as if he knew me. Little did I know that this gentleman harbored a sinister connection to my past. It was only later that I learned his name was Harry. During the conference, I successfully pitched the project from our company to Corbin Miles. Out of all the presentations that had taken place during the day, Miles had selected Rogers Industries to partner with. Harry was naturally infuriated when he saw this unfold. At the time, I only thought this to be a matter of business rivalry and did not pay much attention to this at all. What I did not know was that Harry held a personal grudge against me. Till the day I left for Orlando, I did not see him at all. But everything changed on the day my flight was scheduled to Orlando. That afternoon, I took Hannah with me and left for the airport. I was already late, and the London traffic did not help at all. While we were still stuck in traffic, I quickly paid my fare to the driver and dropped off midway with my luggage. The airport was only a few hundred meters away, so I decided to walk there myself. I asked some passerbys and they advised me to take a narrow alleyway as a shortcut. I was already late, so I decided to follow this lane. It was afternoon time, but that alley was empty. As I was going, I felt a paranoid sense that someone was following me. I did not look back and continued pacing forward. Suddenly, I felt some footsteps running behind me. Before I could even look back, a person in a mask had choked my face with a handkerchief. His glove probably had chloroform on it because I fainted there and then. Just before my sight faded, I noticed that a lady was standing there and taking Hannah from my arms. Since my vision was blurry, I could not make out who that lady was. I don't even remember for how long I passed out. But when I woke up in a dimly lit room, I received the shock of my life. Standing in front of me was a woman whom I instantly recognized. It was Ava. She was the one who had taken Hannah from my arms. Surprise, sister, she said to me as soon as I opened my eyes. I was horrified to see her. I was sitting in a chair. My hands and legs were tied up. Suddenly, I realized that Hannah was not with me. Ava, you? How did you escape from prison? And where is my daughter? I shouted at her. Whoa, calm down, sis. Don't worry, your daughter is fine. She replied, Where is she? Please give her back to me. I cried out to her. I knew Ava was a dangerous person and I did not want her anywhere near my daughter. Oh, so you think I will let you go so easily after you ruined my life? Ava snarled at me. And also, let me give you another surprise. Meet my husband, Harry. Suddenly, a man from the shadows emerged. It was the same person who was staring at me suspiciously in the conference room. I could not believe that he was Ava's husband. This is Harry. He was the one who helped me get out of my incarceration. Ever since I managed to escape from prison, I've been keeping my eye on you, Sarah. 
I was just waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. And when we got to know the news that you were traveling alone to London, I thought it was the best chance for me to exact my revenge, Ava mentioned. But you were there at the conference with your company, I mentioned, looking at Harry. Oh, it was all just a pretense. I was just keeping tabs on you, so I faked being at the conference. Harry replied with a smirk. I could not believe what I was hearing. The person who had tried to ruin my life so many times in the past was back again to strike havoc into my world. But at that point, I was not concerned about anything other than my daughter's safety. Ava, your enmity is with me. Please leave my daughter out of this. Where is she? Where is my Hannah? I pleaded with Ava. Oh, poor Sarah. Don't worry, your daughter is fine. But it would not take me long to throw her off this building. Or do something even worse. Ava retorted. Ava, please, have some mercy. Don't do anything to my Hannah. I will do everything as you follow. Please, please. I again requested to her. Well, if you really care for your daughter, then you would have to do as I say. Got it? Ava replied. Yes, please, tell me. I will do whatever you say. What do you want from me? I said helplessly. As I said this, Ava started to smile wickedly. You know, Sarah, initially I wanted to kill you and throw your body in some dumpster. But that would be too easy a punishment for you. I want you to rot slowly with each day just like you made me rot in prison. So I decided that only one punishment would work for you. I want you to leave Sean Rogers forever. I never want you to go back to that family again. Because if you do, you can't imagine what I will do to your daughter. Ava announced. What? I was flabbergasted to hear this. Yes, your daughter will stay with me for the rest of her life. I promise I will let her live if you follow my instructions. Ava proclaimed. What? No. How can you do this to me, Ava? Haven't you already ruined my life so much? I lashed out, but it seemed to have no response on her. You have 30 seconds to think this through. Otherwise, we're throwing your daughter off this building and shooting you to death. Harry spoke. I could not believe that all of this was happening to me. I had no choice. I had to save my daughter's life. Fine. I will do as you say. Just please spare my daughter. I replied with tears in my eyes. Great. So Harry has a cottage here in the outskirts of London. So you will be hiding there for a while until this matter subsides. I know that husband of yours will soon be here to search for both of you. Till then, you will remain in hiding. And don't try to be clever. If you go to the cops, then you know what I will do to your daughter. Ava warned. I was speechless seeing her callousness unfold, but I had no choice. I had to comply with her demands. Just after this conversation, I was blindfolded and taken to the cottage in the countryside. I did not even get to see Hannah for a long time. Then, a day passed, and then two, and then a month. I knew, Sean, that you were in London, desperately looking for me, but I could do nothing. For a month, I lay in that cottage, crying in anguish. After that, Ava again came to me and told me to change my identity and start leading a new life in Canada. I had to agree with what she said. I changed my appearance and put on a new identity. They had already arranged for plans to smuggle me out of England. As I left, I begged Ava to let me see Hannah one last time, but she denied it. She warned me that if I ever went to the cops or back to the Rogers family, she would hurt my daughter. And then, after a month living in that cottage, I was taken to Canada. I had no money and knew no one in this new country. But I knew that I had to do something. I had to get back to my daughter, some way or the other. Soon, I started working as a freelancer in the corporate world. It did not take me long to assemble some financial assets for myself. And as soon as I got some money, I hired a private investigator, Jones, to spy on Ava in London. I learned that Ava and Harry had been living in London for quite some time, and Hannah was also with them. One day, when Harry and Ava were away for a while, Jones managed to smuggle Hannah out of the house. I knew that I could not go to London as Ava would suspect me of taking Hannah, so I took the help of Corbin Miles. I called him and although he was shocked to hear my voice, I explained everything to him in detail. I asked Jones to deliver Hannah to Miles because I knew Miles was the only person I could trust. And ever since then, 
Hannah has been staying with Corbin Miles and his wife, Amelia. I could not take my daughter with me, because I knew that Ava was probably spying on me in Canada, and that is also the reason why I could not come to the family. If Ava had found out that I broke my promise, she would have gone to extreme lengths to harm Hillary, and I could not let that happen. This is why I thought it was best to start my new life. And it was while working in Toronto that I met Joel and started a life with him. But every six months or so, I would secretly visit London to meet my daughter, Hannah. I knew that I had to do it all secretly so that Ava did not suspect me. And this is how my life was going for the last five years until everything changed recently. I was there in Chicago for Alice's wedding when Adam saw me at the airport. I was terrified. I could not let this fake cover of identity slip away. And that is why I lashed out at Adam, so that his doubts subsided. I even changed my hotel to protect my identity. But then fate had other plans, and look how it again brought us together. When I realized that Sean was getting engaged to Casey, I did not want to impede his life. I just wanted him to move on. So I put up with a facade for so long. I am sorry that I hurt all of you, but believe me, I had no other choice. I only did this to protect my daughters. I am sorry. Sarah finished narrating her story and burst into tears. Episode 310 A Happy Ever After As Sarah finished telling her story, she burst into tears. With each incident she narrated to the family, she had to relive those traumatic memories. Mrs. Roger sat beside Sarah and began to console her. Everyone was overwhelmed to finally learn the truth. No one could believe that Ava was the one who had been orchestrating all of this. There were a lot of questions brewing inside everyone's minds, but they didn't want to exert a lot of pressure on Sarah by throwing one question after another. Finally, Sean broke the silence. But Corbin, why didn't he tell me that Hannah was with him? I used to call him every day to ask if he found any information regarding you. Sean spoke up. Because I had asked him to do so. I am sorry, Sean. I know that I kept your daughter away from you, but I had no choice. I only did that to protect you and the family. Sarah replied. But I could have protected you and Hannah. You just had to reach out, Sarah. Sean stated with tears in his eyes. I know, Sean, but I did not want to take any risks. I knew that if I ever came back to you, Ava would go to extreme lengths to harm the family. I was constantly scared of her. Sarah replied. As they listened to the truth, Mrs. Rogers and Grandma were also sobbing. We understand you, Sarah. We knew that you could never leave us like this. There had to be some reason behind this. Mrs. Rogers mentioned. I used to miss all of you so much. I have dealt with that pain of staying away from my loved ones every single day. But I could never forget any of you. I used to log into Facebook with my fake ID, just to catch a glimpse of everyone. Lily, Natalie, Ivy. I saw each of the photographs that you uploaded. That is how I kept track of the changes that were happening in your life. I saw every interview of Sean, because that was the only way I could see his face. Sarah mentioned teary-eyed. Joel and Casey, who were standing alongside, were also moved after hearing Sarah's side of the story. Casey could not believe that a woman could sacrifice everything just to protect her family. As she assessed everything, Casey felt guilty for her treatment of Sarah. The only person who was there for me all of these years was Joel. I don't know how I could have braved through this miserable life without him. Sarah looked gratefully at Joel. Now I understand why you used to go to London every once in a while. But you used to tell me that you had an aunt in London that you visited. Joel mentioned, I am sorry, Joel, that I lied to you. I could not tell you about Hannah. That is why I had to make up an excuse every time I went there. Sarah replied sobbingly, Now, I will make sure that Ava goes to hell. I'm not going to spare her. Sean gritted his teeth in anger. Sean, I understand your anger, but please don't take any reckless action right now. I first need to get my Hannah back. I know that Ava is too cunning, and she will go to extreme lengths to harm Hannah. If she gets to know what I'm up to. Sarah explained. Okay, so now we just need to get our Hannah back. After that, I will take care of that Ava. Sean grumbled. Mrs. Rogers looked at Joel and then back at Sarah. Sarah, are you willing to come back to us? She asked. 
Sarah shot a glance at Joel, however, Joel knew that Sarah would always love Sean and it would be wrong to deprive her of her true love and family. He looked at Madeline and nodded his head. Sarah embraced Mrs. Rogers. Soon, the entire family came together and hugged her. Joel and Casey standing outside the circle could not help but smile at the reunion. The dark days of this family were finally over. One week later, after revealing her truth to the family, Sarah was finally relieved. All the pain and the burden that she had been carrying for the last five years was finally alleviated. She immediately called Corbin and informed him about the revelation. Corbin was delighted to learn that Sarah could finally live her life happily like before. He immediately booked a flight to Orlando to take Hannah to meet her father. However, Amelia and Corbin were also a bit disheartened to let Hannah go since they had raised her like their own daughter. Ever since she was a kid, they had given Hannah the same love that they would have given their daughter, but they knew that they had to do the right thing and finally reunite this long-separated family. As Hillary got better, Sean introduced her to Sarah, her mother. At first, it was difficult for Hillary to reconcile Madeline's identity to that of her mother, but since her bond with Madeline had been so strong, she had no problem calling her Sarah, her mama. After all, Hillary was just a five-year-old girl. Sean and Sarah decided that both of them would happily explain the truth to their daughters once the time came. Sean used all his power and might to find the crooked Ava and her husband, but no matter how hard the police tried, they could not find a trace of Ava. Later, Sean got some information from London about how Ava had managed to escape from England and had taken refuge in some other country. Sean, however, assured himself that he would leave no opportunity to excavate his revenge on Ava. But the biggest surprise of the family came when Corbin and Amelia finally arrived there in Orlando with Hannah. She was a replica of Hillary. When Hillary first saw her twin sister, she wondered if she was looking into a mirror. Dada, who is this? Hillary innocently asked. Princess, this is your sister, the second princess. You always wanted a sister, right? Sean explained. When Hillary learned this, she immediately hugged Hannah. Little Hannah was too shocked to see all of these new people around her, but she instantly recognized her mama standing amidst them. Well, today is a great day, Sean. We should finally have a family photograph of all of us. But first, let's have the four of you together, Victor suggested. Sean smiled and agreed. He held Hillary in his arms while Sarah was standing next to him, holding Hannah. Their perfect family was finally complete. Since Sarah and Sean had reunited after many years, they decided to plan a small ceremony to renew their wedding vows. Everyone was present there for the ceremony. Even Joel and Casey showed up at the event. By now, both of them had developed a bond for one another, and Joel even invited Casey to Canada to handle one of the major projects at his company. Casey gladly accepted. The entire ceremony took place by Miami Beach. Sarah was dressed in a beautiful white gown, while Sean had donned a tuxedo. Both of them looked incredibly ravishing. But the centers of attraction were Hillary and Hannah, wearing identical pink dresses and holding a bouquet. If it had not been for their accent, no one would have been able to tell them apart. Oh, both of them look so adorable! Natalie smiled, looking at the twins. I think it's time for us to plan kids of our own. Victor laughed. Natalie gently nudged at his shoulder. Both Sean and Sarah were standing at the altar, looking into each other's eyes. The priest standing before them was renewing their vows. Life has surely brought you both wonderful blessings and difficult challenges over the years. But here you are today having fulfilled the vows to love, honor, and cherish one another on your wedding day. As you celebrate here today, and as you reflect over all the years as husband and wife, do you now wish to reaffirm the vows you took years ago? The priest proclaimed. We do. Both of them replied simultaneously and smiled at each other. Thank you, Sarah, for coming into my life and giving me these two beautiful daughters. You were the only one who taught me what love is. You came into my life by being my substitute bride. But because of your love and sincerity, you became my lifeline. Sean thought to himself as he looked at Sarah. 
You may now kiss your bride, the priest announced. After years of staying so far away from each other, Sean and Sarah finally came close to one another, ending their story with a lovely kiss. And thus ended the story of the substitute bride. This was the unusual love story of Sarah and Sean, whose unconventional relationship brought along a series of mixed emotions. There was love and hate, togetherness and animosity. Every feeling that they experienced directly striked a chord with us. After several obstacles in their path of love, finally, Sarah and Sean have now been living a happy life along with their happy family. That's it for today, guys. If you want to inspire me more, you can buy me a puppy. Thank you for listening.